All right, let's take a look at the keyboard on the Razer Blade Pro 17. All right, so if you can see, I'm recording my screen and the keyboard itself. Uh, so you, when you get a Razer product, either this or the eGPU, you have the Synapse software comes in. I mean, I guess there's other things too, but that's all I have is the eGPU and the Razer Blade Pro 17. For your dashboard, you can see your current devices. So this device is the Razer Blade, and then there's all these modules. I don't know everything about all that's going on here. But you see the modules here, you can tie in Alexa, Nano Leaf, or Hue, which is pretty cool. I probably will pick up some Hue lights to kind of get them all synced together. Shortcuts I don't use. Let's go back to the dashboard, click on the razor blade. Here you can see your keyboard here, and you can see you can change the color per key if you want. You can set a gaming mode, so it disables the Windows key, which is weird. I do like it where you can kind of set the function keys to be function keys or the multimedia keys. So basically, you know, if you set it to function, then you have to hit the function button or if you just have it set to where it is, you can press, press the button and it does where it is. You can open the trackpad settings uh, right from here, no problem. I haven't had no problems with the trackpad. I think it's been pretty good. So from here, lighting and then performance. You can change performance in here if you want. So this is where you would change it to, we'll go back to lighting in a second. You can change it from NVIDIA Optimus. That's where it's, it kind of chooses between the integrated graphics and GPU. If you set it to dedicated GPU you only, then you can make it stick to the NVIDIA card and that way it will force you to reboot though if you pick it. And so I'm not gonna do that now. You know, there's a lot more stuff you can do here, right? But today we're just gonna look at the lighting, right? So there's tons and tons of stuff you can do in here. And so you can change the settings of the, of the brightness uh, whenever it's on battery or when it's plugged in. You can have it turned off the lights, like once on battery, if you turn the display off, then you can make it turn off or if it goes to sleep, lights turn off. This is worth noting, I set that up on the eGPU and it didn't work quite right. So I don't know if it works on this or not. I haven't really messed with it. All I've really messed with is this color effects and they're pretty cool. So if you get fancy, you can go to Chrome Studio. I don't get that kind of fancy. I just go through these. So ambient awareness. Uh, so that would sync with other devices, I guess. An audio meter is really cool. That way it will play. If you play a song, it should dance with the song, I guess. Play some Sam, beat yourself. I interviewed Sam. So I can see that being really cool if you had, for example, my son has the eGPU. We're going to hook the Hue lights up with that. And I can imagine that'll be pretty fresh to have the lights from the eGPU and the Hue all tied to his music. Should be pretty cool. Breathing is, that's kind of why I leave it on default a lot of the times. It literally just, you know, gets lighter and darker, like a breathing. And you can change the color, right? You can make it two colors. So let's do green in. So there's the green and we'll see. I guess it changes colors when it breathes to orange, maybe. And then you can make it randomized, whatever, right? Fire, that's what I like a lot. That's what was on when the, for the most part, I kind of been leaving it on fire because it looks pretty cool. So I like that. Reactive, I don't know what reactive is. I don't see it stays on, so like if you were to type, I see. So reactive could be cool, I guess, if you were typing. So that's kind of neat, but my hands are so big, it kind of covers the screen up, so that doesn't really do very much for me. Ripple is really a cool one. That's the one I was showing the intro where you just kind of type like that and it changes the color. Oh, it changed the fire, I don't know why that. I'm hitting something here to make it change. I don't know where it is. But yeah, if I go back to my text document. So yeah, that's pretty neat. And then spectrum cycling. I think that's what the default is when it's on. And it does look, I mean, it's, if you just want to let it, sit, let it sit there, that's pretty cool too, I guess. And the starlight's pretty neat. It just kind of twinkles like that, right? So I don't mind that either. You can make it a random color, and that's pretty cool. Static, that it means it just stays one color. So when I first got it, as cool as these are, I found it very distracting for just regular old typing. So I ended up changing it static, and I put it on green, or I may have did like a yellow maybe, or like a light color. I probably just did white. But yeah, so just something simple. You can leave static and it lights up pretty good. So like I said, the keyboard itself was just distracting to me with all those colors. I'd never used a gaming keyboard before and all these colors. And when trying to, you know, it's cool for gaming, I'm sure, and just for random stuff. But when I first broke it out the box and I was trying to type like actual Word documents and stuff, it, it just, it became super distracting for me. A wave is a really cool one, but this could definitely, I wish you could slow that wave down a little bit because I mean, it's going fast. On the eGPU, I tend to leave it on wave a lot because there's just one little bar at the bottom doing that and it looks pretty cool. This is kind of a lot. Like I think if you're 
trying to actually use the keyboard. And you can change the direction, of course. But yeah, it seems to go so fast. And then wheel. Also, I would like to slow that down a bit, but pretty neat. All right, so that's the lighting effects. Let's go ahead and take a look at some other things. When I was looking at these reviews to get this Razer Blade Pro, a lot of people said the keyboard was either okay or just not good. And they said it was cramped and you know i just ignored them and went ahead and bought it so i did some measurements i did some typing tests now uh, let's take a look and see you can tell what i think oh yeah before we go spoiler alert i have been looking at other laptops now and i will say the razor seems to definitely do the keyboard colors better than most folks like most of the keys are all lit up all around let I me mean, this is distracting it's back to fire the razor blade appears to just have it on the actual letter or number itself like some here you can see a little bit under and there but like for the most part all of the keyboards it seems like it lights up the whole square of the key uh, this is very distinct to me and i think it looks pretty good so all right uh, that's all we got here so let's check out the measurements and then we'll do some typing testing so i know it looks kind of gross it's fingerprinting but i didn't clean it off it just collects stuff and i saw that complaint beforehand and i was like well that's silly it's not gonna bother me but it does bother me and i'm not like a gross person that eats their food at their computer i eat my food at the kitchen table as you're supposed to i will wash my hands multiple times i have alcohol wipes for my phone you know i'm not like the doritos fingers or whatever stupid stereotype there is and i really haven't even used it that much because i don't like the keyboard and i saw a lot of complaints that the keyboard was small and that it didn't have the number pad the keyboard was gonna bother me because i thought they were just complaining that was in here but since it's still a 17 inch laptop i thought you know that should be fine and i don't like the number i mean when i have a regular keyboard yes but when i have a laptop i'd rather not have a, a number pad and it's hard to quite understand what people talk about when they say they don't like the keyboard i play games on the controllers so i'm not doing this you know W, sad, whatever the thing is, right? But I do type a lot and I plan to use this as a regular laptop. So part of the problem is the keys are small and it's not about the travel. Like I don't mind that when I'm typing on it and I type pretty fast. I'll do a typing test later, but I think I got around 77 words per minute on here, which isn't bad. And I have large hands. So the keys to me are cramped and like it, it almost feels like you're squishing your hands in to type on it, which is not pleasant. You know, and I was trying to, and I couldn't really find any details and I was torn between this and the Dell XPS and everyone talks about how nice the keyboard on the Dell XPS is. But I think this has like 1.1 millimeter key travel and the Dell only has like 1.3. So I was like, well, that's not going to bother me. And that doesn't bother me. I don't mind it going down. I don't use a mechanical keyboard. I'm not one of those guys, but the key caps themselves are small that makes the keyboard feel cramped and it feels weird when you're typing uh, my buddy tony he loves razor products and you know he wanted me to love this keyboard and it's funny enough i have this device and my buddy tony he's not very technical right he is uh not very good with computers or just tech in general and one day he was like hey i need to measure something really really small this what is that what would i use and so I said, well, I have one of these things. This is a electronic digital caliper. It's a precision measurement tool where right? you can just move it to measure things. I go, why do you need it? And he's like, nothing, just something really, really small. So I don't know what he needed it for, but now, and I can measure these keys, right? So let's take a look. So a regular key, like the B key here is point, that's inches. So 15.7 millimeters wide, and I guess 15 point, no, 14.8 millimeters tall. And even like, you know, these arrow keys are pretty small as well. Yeah, about 14.8 millimeters tall. Same thing, all of them should be about the same height, right? All of them are going to be about 14.8 tall. And like this shift key is abnormally long, I guess, compared to like a normal. But even the shift key over here is pretty small. It's 34.8 millimeters. And obviously these arrow keys here are tiny. And it's 7.9 millimeters, I guess. And keep in mind, this is a 17 inch laptop. So you can just look at the Dell and instantly see the difference, but we can measure it. We have the technology. So let's get the razor out here. And this part doesn't really bother me, but like, I kind of like the fact the razor is bigger, but this Dell is a 17 inch laptop as well. You can see it's physically smaller than the razor. However, as we're about to tell, it has much larger keys. So 15.5 inches tall for a regular key and 16.5 inches wide. And then the shift key over here was like 34 or something. And here we're looking at 48. And of course, these arrow keys are substantially larger, as you can tell, 8.9. Now, this is a 17 inch laptop, which the Razer is as well. Let's take a look at a 15 inch laptop. This is a 15 inch Lenovo Yoga Chromebook, but I actually like this keyboard a lot. Now, again, the keys here are going to be still larger. And then 
15.5, so smaller than the Dell, but still much larger than the Razer. And 16 there for that, right? And just for reference, the shift key around 46.7. And this is a 15 inch laptop. Let's go even smaller. This is a Lenovo Yoga Windows laptop, is a 14 inch laptop. It does have small arrow keys, but let's take a look. Still around eight millimeters. Now let's check out just a random letter here. 15.8, I guess, pretty close to the Razer, but as you can tell, there's space between the keys. Whereas the Razer, everything's touching directly. And now these have like a little shield shape, so it's kind of, I'll go with the biggest part, I guess. 15.6, I'll go with the smallest part. So again, this is closer in size to the Razer keycaps, but you can see there's space in between. Like there's a good, you know, three millimeters in between those. So it's a, still a pretty comfortable typing experience. I love this keyboard so much, I went out and bought the Lenovo keyboard for my desktop computer. That looks like the exact same keys essentially, but they're a lot larger, of course, 16.8, 15.8. Shift key, if you really care about that, we're at 39.9. .9. And obviously these arrow keys would be way bigger, so I'm not even gonna measure those. And let's go deeper steel. So this is a Apple Magic Keyboard, and this is a Logitech MX Keys. Actually, I don't like Apple products that much, but I did like this keyboard a lot when I had to use a MacBook for work. But you can see the keys are still 15.4 tall and 15.9 wide. At this point, I don't remember the Razor R. The Italian job manager will pop that up on screen, hopefully so it makes sense. But I feel confident it's bigger than the Razor. And once again, as you can see, there's still space in between. So I did like this keyboard. My current regular keyboard for my desktop now is this Logitech MX Keys. And this is also a pleasant typing experience. And so we're at roughly 16 tall and 16.1 wide. Obviously, just because I did it a couple times already, let's measure the shift key, 40.2. And this is a pleasant typing experience. And even though the keys are different, like these have indentation, I find typing on this to be very similar to the Dell XPS. And finally, let's look at the Bridge Type-C keyboard. This was the company Bridge, B-R-Y-D-G-E. I bought this myself. It is a Chrome OS-specific keyboard. Once again, 15.3. That is a little bit small, I guess. 16.6. .6. No, so still much bigger. And, of course, there's still some space there, right? Space being... So, I don't use this. My son uses this, but this is a pretty cheap keyboard, too. So, if we look again at the Dell keyboard, there is a minute amount of space between the keys. Not a ton. Again, I'm trying not to scratch these keys so it's not going to be super precise so about 2.8 millimeters right but it's a comfortable hands placement there right all right well i guess there is space i was forgetting that there is a little bit of space between these keys at 3.0 millimeters but then we go back to the width 16.2 and 15.3 so again i don't remember all the numbers exactly but i feel like i guess it's shorter maybe that's the problem but it's just an odd typing experience and obviously it's disgusting looking another oddness i'll point out the numbers are above the symbols no other keyboard does that here's the macbook you can see the number below the symbol like the pound sign three is below there even the chrome has the numbers below the symbols and of course the lenovo has the numbers below the symbols and again that's not necessarily problematic but is it's odd looking whenever you're, if you glance down the keyboard while you're typing, something's distracting about it for me. Like, again, I'm a professional, I'm a businessman. I type a lot. I type lots of reports and documents and I don't look at the keyboard I'm typing. Occasionally you glance down and I don't know, something about it throws me off as a first time Razer user. Same thing with the F1 keys, right? It does do this cool thing where you hold down the function and only these light up, but they also have the number above the symbol, which quite frequently the symbol will be above the F you know, whatever. Here on most Windows keyboards, the symbol is way larger than the F numbers, but here it's not. I don't know why. It's very odd. So yeah, I'm still running through the paces. Performance wise, the machine's been great. Screen is really good. The Dell is better, but hands down, the worst problem of this device is this keyboard. If I return it, the keyboard is going to be the number one reason.